All right, so in this video, we're going to download, install, and configure Code Igniter. Uh, we'll do some configuration, but we, we probably won't get it get to all of it in this video because uh, there's quite a bit that needs to be done to set it up correctly. We want to have SEO friendly URLs, uh, so we get to create a .htaccess file. We want to link our database. We want to include our all our auto loaders. So there's quite a bit to, to be done. Um, to get the the optimal setting all right so what you want to do is go to lslab.com slash code igniter and just click on the green download button all right so whoop. so now I have the zip file open which has an application folder a system folder and a user guide folder all right so what we want to do now is create the folder on the server where we want Code Igniter to run. And like I said, I'm using XAMP. If you're using XAMP, then the default uh, location of your server folder is in your C drive, and then XAMP, and then htdocs. All right, so this is where you want to create the folder. Uh, my installation, I have it in my Dropbox folder. So if I go to my Dropbox, I have my uh, an HT Docs folder just so I can access it on multiple machines, which I would suggest that you do as well. All right, and in this directory we have a my to do folder, so I'm going to create a folder. Um, actually, you know what? I want it to be named my to do, so I'm just gonna. Whoop. Just say my to do old, and then I'm going to create this folder and call it my to do. All right, so if we open that up, we want to drag all our files into that folder. And if you're not using XAMPP and you're using a, just a, a, a web host or you have your own server, just upload it to uh, whatever folder you want for your application. All right, so now we have the the um, files in the htdocs folder and the first thing I want to do is get rid of this user guide and it's basically just the documentation and you can find the same info on the code igniter website so there's really no sense in having this so I'm gonna get rid of that alright and the next thing I want to do is we have two folders application system system we don't touch it has all the core libraries things like that all the core helpers we don't want to touch anything in that folder. We do want to touch things in the application folder. This is where we'll be storing our controllers, our models and views, and where we'll do our configurations. You can see there's quite a bit of configuration files here. Um, for security reasons, you don't, need, you don't have to, but I like to change the names of these directories. So I'm actually going to rename this just app and I'm gonna rename this uh, just sys, S-Y-S. And you can change it to whatever you want, but if you change it, make sure that you open up this index.php file. All right, so I'm going to open up the Sublime Text, which I'm using as a code editor. Uh, you can use whatever you'd like. Sublime Text is free and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty nice, so. I'm going to add a project folder and I'm just going to select that code igniter folder. I mean, I'm sorry, that my to do folder, which I have in my Dropbox folder. In actually in my htdocs folder. All right, so now I have my my structure here. Um, so I'll minimize that. And what we need to do since we rename these folders is open up the core index.php file. And if we scroll down, uh, if you take a look at this, we can, we can uh, set different environments. If you've ever used Rails or, or um, something like that, then you'd probably, you've probably seen this. And you can add different functionality for different uh, environments. For example, the development, the development environment, we're showing all errors. All right, because we want to be able to debug. If we're in the production uh, environment, then we're setting error reporting to zero. All right, so you can set different things depending on which uh, which you're in, which uh, environment 
you're in. All right, so this is where we want to change the names. So the system folder, we rename to sys, and then the application, we rename to app. All right, so, so let's save that, do a control S, and let's go ahead and visit that um, directory. So localhost slash uh, my to do. Nope, not my to do CI. All right, so this is the default welcome page when you install Code Igniter, and it's basically uh, a, a controller called Welcome, uh, which has a model, a welcome model, and a welcome view. All right, so if we go and look in the file structure in app, in app, uh, there's a welcome controller, and let's see, actually it doesn't have a model. Uh, and then the view is just this welcome message view, and this is what we're seeing here. Uh, we have some inline CSS here, uh, and then just the message that you see. What we want to do now is we want to set our base URL. All right, so that would be in the config and in config.php. All right, so we have two things here. We have a base URL. Um, which is going to be for us is going to be localhost slash my to do all right that'll be the base URL and we have uh, a default index page which is index.php all right so we also have in our routes file we have the default controller set as the welcome controller and since what well, the welcome controller is set to the default that's what we see when we don't have anything um, on the end of this, all right. We don't have a, a controller in our URL, but if we go to controller, I mean, I'm sorry, my to do slash welcome, uh, we don't see it, and that's because we need our index page. So index PHP slash welcome. All right. So as it is now, when we create a controller, say we created a controller called Pages, uh, if we wanted to visit that that view, uh, we would have to do index.php slash pages and we don't want that we want to um, be able to just do slash and then our controller alright and if you don't understand that what we have in here is going to call this controller so since we have slash welcome it's going to call this controller here alright which then loads the view which we see down here this welcome message all right, so what I want to do is get rid of that. Um, I want to be able to go to this URL. And right now, as it is, we need to do the index PHP. So what we need to do is we need to create an HTAC, a .htaccess file. And we want to create that in our root directory. So I'm going to go ahead and open up our folder structure here. And we want to create, I'm just going to right click and create a new document and we're going to call it .htaccess alright so let's, Windows sometimes has an issue with this because um, it doesn't have a, an extension uh, I think we can do it through sublime text through the editor uh, let's see new text document rename dot ht access all right so that let us do it so do it through your um, through your code editor if you have to couldn't find this item all right good so we have our dot ht access file if you have to you can uh, open up filezilla and and log into your website and create it there all right, so we want to grab that .htaccess file. All right, so actually that's not the one we want. You want to make sure that you get the one in the root because if you look in the app directory, it has one as well and the system directory. We don't want to touch those, all right? We want only the one in the root. So I'm going to close that up and we want this one, which should be blank. And what I'm going to do is just paste some some content in here, some code. Um, that'll interact with our server and 
what it's going to do is it's going to route everything through the index.php file uh, and it's going to make it so that people cannot browse like um, they can't browse through our website folders through the browser uh, the only thing that's going to be public that the browser will be able to access is the index.php file and then things like images uh, CSS stuff that we need to be public all right um, robots.txt things like that all right so we need this to be able to use nice URLs without the index.php so let's save that all right and if we go back here and we try to reload this now we have we don't need to use that index.php all right so that's how you enable um, SEO URLs with CodeIgniter all right so the next thing we want to do is connect our database oh I'm sorry we need to fill in we want to go back to that config.php file and the base URL uh, usually we would put localhost slash uh, my to do alright so that is perfectly fine but this isn't dynamic if we decide to move this this app to a new domain then we have to re-enter something here so what I do is put in something dynamic where it can automatically find the URL using um, super globals so let me just grab something and paste it in um, let's see all right so I'm just gonna get rid of this and paste this in all right and this is going to grab our domain through the server super global uh, through HTTP host and then the directory name we can get through the script name all right so this is going to equal the same thing and if you move this site or this app to a new domain it's automatically going to configure it all right so uh, I do this on all my code igniter apps and now what we want to do is since we enabled SEO URLs and we don't need that index.php in the uh, URL you want to just get rid of this just set this to nothing all right and let's see there's a bunch of things you can do uh, if you want URL suffixes if you want it to look like this dot HTML you can do that language settings I don't think there's anything that we need to do here oh actually we do all right so if you're going to be using the session class which we are because we're going to have a, a login system then you want to set an encryption key and this can be anything you want all right so I'll just change, put it one two three four but you want something um, with more security than one two three four all right uh, and then let's see down here this looks fine all right so that's all we have to do with this so let's save the config.php file and next we want to open up the database f file and we want to insert our info here all right so our username was root password I think I have just right here simple password and the name of the database which let's see we named it new to do All right, so we want to put that in the database name. And we we're not um, we're not restricted to MySQL. We can also use other databases, um, Postgres or something like that. Uh, but by default, we have the MySQL driver, so that's fine. And that's it for the database. So let's save that. Still make sure everything's working. All right, so let's see. We want to configure the auto loaders. So if we go to autoload.php, and what this does is makes it so that you don't have to manually load uh, certain aspects of your site or your app, such as packages, libraries, helpers, config files, language files, and models. So anything you want to use, you want to add in the proper array here. And one thing that we definitely need is the database uh, library 
if we're going to connect to a database we need that so we're going to place that in here so all we need to do is database alright so we're going to be using a few libraries here I th think yeah we want the session library as well alright so database and session and we want to use the form validation as well and if you want to know more about these libraries, uh, I encourage you to go to the CodeIgniter site and go to the documentation and you find everything you need. That's another reason I really like CodeIgniter is everything is well documented, in my opinion. Now, helpers are basically just functions. They're files with functions. They don't have a class. They don't have anything. They're just uh, functions you can include. All right, And we can make our own helpers, but there's a few core helpers that we want to use. One is the URL helper. Um, we also want the form helper. And we want the HTML helper. Okay. So that should be all we need for now. Uh, we will auto load some models when we get to that. Uh, but for now, we can just save this. All right, let's make sure everything's working. All right, so that we basically have uh, a complete CodeIgniter installation that has been configured. All right, so in the next video, what we'll be doing is creating a new controller um, and replacing the welcome controller, and we'll look at that. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.